Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Grace for today. Blessings. The Lord is good to us. He remains the faithful God. There is no God like our God. He is mighty to save. He delivers. He's our strong tower. He is our way out, our way through, our way around, our way over. He's the mighty God. He's just the mighty God. He's the mighty God. You better say that. He is the mighty God. Blessings to everybody. Thank you so much for joining. And we are grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Hope you had a good weekend and that the Lord's favor shined upon you and that you saw all that you needed to see and that you heard all that you needed to hear. Thank you for sharing as soon as you come on. And um, for some reason, I just don't see my comments. Hmm. Hold on, everybody. Y'all keep coming on. <laughs> Let me just try to figure out where they went to. Okay, well, I'll look somewhere else. Anyway, God bless everybody. Thank you so much. Let's get started. I need to move forward. I'll figure out, I'll look over here for comments. So, blessings everybody. I think, I think everything's working. So, let's get started. So, we've been talking about um, Joseph and his reunion with his brothers. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Good morning. Hope you had a good weekend. And um, like I did, hope you got some, got some rest and got some things done. And uh, you're preparing for the end of this year. We're in August. And I pray that you're preparing and accomplishing the things that you should. And um, that you're staying fo focused. Good morning. All right. And I want you to know that um, you are in my prayers and that I think of you all often. And I may not know everything going on in your life. I don't know everything going on in your life. But I know that God sees. And God knows. And he is always having us on his mind. More than you can do for anybody. God sees and he knows. So let's just know that God is aware. So thank you so much. And uh, for those of you who call my name in prayer. I can tell when you're praying. So thank you for that. Much love to you my sister. That's my sister, sister, my blood sister. God bless everybody. Let's get started. So let's just pick up right here where Joseph gathers himself and he comes back and he talks to his brothers and he's kissing them on their cheeks and carrying on. Verse 15 is where I want to start today. Moreover, he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them. And after that, his brethren talk with them. You can imagine that their relationship changed. The dynamics of their relationship changed. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, you've got to go through something before your relationship can change. Sometimes people don't know who you are until your relationship. Oh, absolutely. Sam Travis, right? We're praying for him. We sure will be. You tell him we're praying and we'll believe in God to bring him all out of there safely. Speedy recovery. That the Lord will open up every bronchial tube. And that every airway will be open in Jesus name. Y'all pray for Brother Sam. He's one of our Grace for Today family viewers. All right. So um, here, sometimes people don't, the scripture is clear about that. Uh, sometimes we don't know who we are until we've seen God manifest himself. Sometimes we're resistant to what God is doing in each other's lives because we see each other, we're familiar with each other. We're familiar, we're so familiar with each other that we don't see God in each other. But beloved, Paul said, all I need to know is uh, among you is Christ, uh, Jesus Christ and him crucified. Sometimes we don't need to know everything else. Good morning, Trinisa. We Sometimes we don't need to know anything else other than Jesus Christ and him crucified. Sometimes you don't need all that other stuff. You don't need to know what color my walls are. You don't need to see people too common because then sometimes you won't receive from them. Sometimes you won't receive from them. We need to see people as who, who God designed them to be. 
what they're supposed to be in our lives, what they're supposed to produce in our lives, receive the ministry that God put in them for us. God deposited, uh, you need to pray that God would bring into your lives the people that you need to help you to grow and receive from them and receive from them. It may not be how you like it or what you want it. It may not look all glitz and glam, but if it's for you, receive it. Hey, Sister Michelle, we, we need to receive it so we can grow. Some people wouldn't receive Jesus and they died just like they were. Here, Joseph's brothers, the scripture says, and after that, his brothers talked with him. Their relationship changed. Now they could talk. Now they could communicate. And the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brethren are come. And it pleased Pharaoh well and his servants. Remember, Joseph was a Hebrew. The Egyptians' relationship with the Hebrews was not one where they sat and ate bread, broke bread together. They didn't have that kind of thing. But here you have uh, Pharaoh being pleased because, listen, Joseph's reputation was that he had blessed the Egyptians. They had become wealthy because of the plan God gave to Joseph. It wasn't just for Joseph. It wasn't just for the Egyptians. It was for Joseph's family as well. Joseph may not have even realized that because he didn't think he'd ever see his family again. But when they showed up, sometimes you don't even know everything. We will understand it better. What's that old song? By and by. We'll understand it better by and by. That's why we follow God's plan. That's why you don't know everything. We just follow on. We'll know and understand it better as we follow on, as we walk with the Lord, as we continue to hear him. As we, and sometimes the thing is we get derailed before we get to the palace. We get stuck where we are. We throw in the towel. Before we get to where God is trying to get us, because we get so dismayed, we get so stuck at it ain't working like it should. We don't see the end. We see right now and it don't look too good. It ain't over, beloved. It's not over, beloved. It's not over. Let's trust that God is doing a Romans 8.28 for us. And this we know that all things are working together for our good because we love the Lord and we're called according to his purpose. Do you love the Lord? Yes. Are you called according to his purpose? Yes. Then he's going to work everything together for your good. Even the things that don't look good, he gonna, he's going to work it together for good. Those mistakes you made, those missteps you made, those falling outs that you had, God is going to work. Those things you thought would produce evil and ill, it might, but God will turn it around. Those things where you talk too much, you told all this you shouldn't have. Those things where you got in a bad relationship and you shouldn't have. God is able. God is able to turn things around and make them good. He'll make it good. He'll make it good. God knows how to make it good. He knows how to bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing. He knows how to turn it around and get glory out of it. He knows how to make it a blessing. He knows how to make your enemies your footstool. He'll work it together for my good. God knows how. God knows you don't, you may, you may try to figure out what's that song while you trying to figure it out. God's already worked it out. We are finite. 
We are limited in what we can think. We can only figure so far, but God has gone down through the years. He's gone. He sees way down yonder. He's already worked it out. He's already turned it around. Look, he, he's all, he had already started Joseph on the way to the palace before the famine ever was even mentioned, before Pharaoh even had a dream. Joseph was already on the way. Hallelujah! God is already sending for your next before you even get there. God is already preparing a way before you get there. God is already planning and preparing for your future before you get there. He knows the way that I take. He's already planning for me. He has plans for me. He has plans for me. Bigger than my wildest dreams. He has plans. Yes, he does. I don't see him, but I trust him. I trust him because I am limited in what I see. So are you, unless he reveals it to us. We are limited in what we see, right? Our steps, our steps are ordered. And you know, I told you one of the words I really love is the word orchestrate. He orchestrates. He orchestrates our lives. He already has it planned. We just need to follow his plan. Many are the plans is, that are in a man's heart, but it is the purpose of the Lord that shall, I gotta go, that shall prevail. We want his purpose. We want his purpose to prevail in our lives. Lord, just let me let your purpose prevail in my life. Don't let me make any mistakes I don't, that won't get me to your glory, that won't get me to where I'm supposed to be. Get me to my next. Get me to my next. Here. He tells Pharaoh, and here, I told you Friday, the thing was this. It wasn't over that Joseph was bringing his family to Goshen. Hurry up and get here because I'm going to give you Goshen. That wasn't all God had. Here, verse 17, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, say unto thy brethren, this do you. Lade your beast and go get you unto the land of Canaan and take your father and your household and come unto me and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt and ye shall eat the fat of the land. Now thou art commanded this do you take your wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives and bring your father and come also regard not your stuff for the good of all the land of Egypt is yours and the children of Israel did so. God gave them more than enough. They were already wealthy. They were already wealthy. Remember that. They weren't poor and poverty stricken. Now, if had the famine persisted and they did not have the favor of God already on their lives, yes. But here, they were going to get the best already in Egypt. Don't you tell me God won't plan for you. We need to trust him. I got to pick this up tomorrow because my time is gone. Hallelujah. I'm going to pick up right there. I'm going to start at verse 20 because I need us to hear this again. Tomorrow is going to be the 8th. Let's start there. Let's start right there. Let me just remind you, just because you were in the pit, because you were in the pal, you were in the prison, you were in po at Potiphar's and lied on, doesn't mean it's over. It's a season. You better know your seasons. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for what you've begun in us. Thank you that you will finish what you've started. Lord, finish it in us. Order our steps. Order our children's steps. Help us to follow you with all of our hearts, our souls, our minds, our strength. We honor you and we bless you. We thank you that you watch over your word to bring it to pass in our lives. We thank you because your word never fails. And we give you honor. Be our healer today. Heal brother Sam. Lord God, open his passageways. Lord God, give him a miracle. Let him give him a testimony. 
Hey, we thank you now that he belongs to you. Undo all the things that the enemy thinks will cause the, his, his end. Lord, I pray even now that you would give miraculous healing. Lord, for every son and daughter that your name is on, bring healing now. Give speedy recovery. Father, we thank you that your word is at work in him now. Your word is at work in everyone who hears my voice. Lord, send your word now and bring healing. Bring healing. Bring healing. Bring healing. Bring healing. We thank you, Lord. You said that healing is the children's bread and we are your children. Father, let blessings chase us down and overtake us. Father, we thank you now that you cause increase to come into our homes. Father, we ask you that you would let speed of recovery be ours. Heal our minds. Heal our bodies. Father, keep protection over our children as they go to school today. Cover them. Let no evil befall them. We bind the spirit of those evil children, those evil influences. Let our children be resilient. Let them not fall prey to bullies and to the tactics, O oh God, of the enemy. Let them all protect their hearts and their minds in the name of Jesus. Cover them. Oh, for your glory. God, your, our children belong to you. You said our children are the heritage of the Lord. Let no evil influences go bombard their minds. Make them of quick understanding in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it and receive it done in Jesus' name. So it is. Amen. All right, I got to go. All right. Yes, y'all better put these kids' names. Y'all better pray for these children. I don't care how old they are. The enemy is busy. Your prayers will matter. They matter. They matter. So stay on the wall. All right. You ain't got to just pray for your children. You better pray for somebody else's children too. And yes, we need to pray for these schools and bind every evil influence that the people who plan to do evil can't do it. Hallelujah. They cannot do it. They cannot do it. They can't even come on the school campuses where the children, people of God's children are. I got to go. Y'all got to go too. Hey, don't forget to pray for somebody else. Share the video. Type in catch the replay. Hashtag uh, graced for today. Don't forget, I'll upload this to YouTube momentarily. And uh, join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this. Time spent in the Word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. We don't pray from the point of weakness. We have been delegated authority. So pray from that point. Take authority. All right. See y'all in the morning. Have a great day. Stand on the word of God because his word won't fail. Speak from that point in faith. All right, everybody have a great day. And uh, until then, remember this, right, Sister Janet? Time spent in the word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.